when attempting to endeavor a work of this scope, it's important to take into consideration all sources, no matter how outlandish they may seem. Inevitably, one comes to classify these sources under one of three potential categories I will dub the three, S, S, the speculative, the spurious and the skeptical. As the adage says, where there's smoke, there's often fire. The speculative helps enable a critical and subjective eye towards the potential veracity of claims, ensuring both detachment and an open eye towards viewing possible connections. The spurious, often the result of tenuous connections and credulity towards unsubstantiated accounts, can often reveal hidden aspects that you had never in your wildest dreams thought possible, and aspects that upon closer examination reveal a definite claim towards historical validity. It is in the realm of the skeptical that we are confronted with a whole new dilemma, however. Unwilling to entertain the possibility that the vast web of intrigue and deceit is much vaster than his understanding allows it to be, the skeptic casts doubt upon anything that does not conform into his or her preset conclusions. His bias becomes all too apparent and unbending in its stubborn refusal of anything that doesn't remotely connect to its predisposed parameters, and sometimes, his or her own vested interests. In this book, I have strived to separate legend from reality, fact from fiction, and examine how both seemingly opposite sides can be weaved into a highly complex series of associations, and ones that can often influence one another in the most unexpected ways. It is likely that some readers will see aspects of all three S, S throughout the book. The most I can ask for is an open mind. It is also likely that some readers, particularly younger ones, will find material that has been well recounted elsewhere. I mentioned younger ones specifically because, having been brought up under the auspices of the information aid, had a wider berth of both information as well as misinformation to absorb, reflect and mull over. Younger ones also seem more conducive to the act of critical thinking and incredulity to firmly established disavowals of the existence of these groups from conventional quarters, something which as time passes grows more and more assailable. I'm grateful for the open minds and quick wits I see from younger generations, and encourage them solely to draw their own conclusions, as much as I would any other generation. I can only hope this work will help encourage you to do so, regardless of your age. This work is meant as both introductory and cautionary. I do not intend it to be the final say on the matter of secret societies, my own or anyone else's, far from it, I believe that as more information is made readily available to the general public, the need for more specialized works will be in higher demand. It is not intended to promote fear or prejudice, but to instill vigilance and critical thought towards established narratives of both history and legend. The truth may indeed be the strongest sword of all. And if I have done anything to sharpen that sword, then my task is complete.